Hello, it is me. I am live, but I feel like it's a little cloudy. Let's see. I always have a little technical, a little technical thing go down in the beginning. Get the hair on point. Get the lighting on point. All right, so it's uh, Tuesday, and um, catching up with all of you on the Facebook Live uh, tonight's topic: unconditional love. I had some mail come to me um, from people who see me on YouTube, from people who see me on Facebook, and they all had common stuff going on, and it was all rooted in a lack of self-love. It was rooted in this um, idea that people should love you and appreciate you the way that you love and appreciate them. And there was like a lot of similarities in it all. So I wanted to um, call out a few of these viewer mail people. I will obviously protect the names of the innocent, but I felt like their situations were so on point that, um, you know, I wanted to bring this to you and just really like, you know, kind of bring this to the forefront. Because like I said, this was like so many people and... Um, you know, just bear with me a second. I'm trying to get, trying to get to these messages. But like, what ended up happening was, and I'll put it on my Facebook because that's where it was. Is it's just this idea of, um, hey Steve, thanks for tuning in. Nice. I'm talking about unconditional love. You're a king, king. Nice. How important it is that men and women love themselves unconditionally treat themselves like the kings and queens that they are and um, stop depending on other people to fill your cup of happiness. That's your job. And um, one of the things that I wanted to bring to your attention was this message. So I'm going to go in this and I'm going to look at all my messages. I'm going to try to find this one. Oh my God, where... Hey, this is such a pain in the ass. Why does Facebook make this so freaking annoying and difficult? Like, all I'm trying to do is score my messages. All right, here we go. As I'm going to give you this whole scene, this entire conversation, and I'm hopeful that you're going to, I mean, guy or girl, like, you're going to relate to this. This is like, this is what goes on with people both sexes. Okay. So... I basically get a message and it says, love life non-existent, doing me now. So I'm like, okay, good for you that you're focusing on yourself. What would you like to learn about yourself? I'd like to learn how to allow myself to be loved. Now this is a common thing. People say, I want love in my life. I wanna find that amazing, awesome, amazing person. But then their actions and what they do and how they're living their life is completely incongruent to that desire. And so then you can't expect love to manifest if you're just kind of like saying, I want love, I want love. And then you're like not going out. You're not putting yourself out there or you're rejecting every single opportunity to be like out in the world, meeting new people, trying new things. You're just like in this place of like, no, I don't want to. So the same openness that attracts love is the same openness that um, you have to bring into the world when you're living and existing just on your own by yourself. So I tell her, when you love yourself first, most, best, and always, then it's easy to receive love from others. You'll know that you're worthy of it. And that also is another issue, is the worth. Do you believe that you're worthy of love? A lot of people say they want love, they want love, but in their subconscious, they have um, beliefs that no longer serve them. Maybe things that, you know, old relationships, horrible breakups, things that even their parents may have said that made them feel unlovable and unworthy of love at the core. So those are the things that, kind of haunt us or come out when we're in relationships or looking for relationships or dealing with relationships. I mean, let's be straight about it. Relationships really is the thing that calls us to be 
better people. Um, it causes us to look at ourselves in a more realistic and truthful way because this other person is like a mirror to who you are. The things that you don't like in someone are typically the things that you are burying in yourself or the things that you're focused upon and that you're fearful about attracting in someone else. And so because you're paying attention to that, that's what you end up attracting. So it goes both ways. It's crazy. Um, so anyway, she says, but I've always loved myself and I know my worth. It's when those I value don't value me like the way I value me. Then I feel who cares about how valuable I am if the ones that I love so much don't value me as much as I value me. So this is a feeling of like being misunderstood, not being valued, and being very attached to the opinions and the outcome of how people come at you in relationships. So she continues and says, I'm very selective and yet we can't control who we love and don't love. It just is. But if like attracts like and I attract who I think is a lower vibration than me, then I feel like a loser and I don't get why I don't attract higher vibe people like me. Then again, another thing I see is the people I want don't want me and the people who don't, the people, wait, what did she say? The, the people that I like don't like me and the people who like me I don't like. So this is another common thing that people see and they come to me about all the time. Um, and then the cycle goes on and on and on. Okay, so a few things with this because this is something that like people say all the time. I said it too. Oh, all the people I like, they don't like me. And the ones that like me, I don't like. Meh, 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 meh. And so it goes and so it goes. And the issue is always you. Always you. Like this is the most empowering thing ever, ever, ever is 100% responsibility for all outcomes. Period. Period. Who you are attracting is an indicator of where you are with yourself. So that said, for this person, we have to look at the first thing she says. She values people. They don't value her. And then she doesn't understand why they're not valuing her as much as she values herself. Now, here's the, the part of that. If you truly value yourself, you're not wasting your time trying to convince anyone of your worth. You just are. You just are. And if they see it, they see it. And if they don't, they don't. And love and light for everybody. And you're on your way. That's self-love. That's unconditional love of self. And that's what we're going to get at today. Because all of these people who come at me, bless their souls, love them all, they're coming with a place of, or from a place of, their worth and their love is outside of themselves. It's out there. It's when I have that girl, when I have that guy to behave this way, to make me happy, and to love me this way, then I will be happy. And it's backwards. It's you're a king, you're a queen, you do whatever it takes to preserve your own vibe, high vibe, and your happiness. It is 100% your responsibility always to maintain your vibe and to maintain your happiness. And when you feel that way, when you really feel that and you believe that and you behave that and live that, you will change who you attract on every level. Your, your careers, your... Um, employees, if you know you have a business, it will be different. I promise you this. It begins with you, the people you date, the relationships you have, how your spouse shows up for you in the relationship, how you show up, extended family. When you take 100% responsibility and you love yourself first, most best and always, I promise you when you commit to that first, commit to yourself, the level of commitment that you will attract from the universe, you will see a change for the better, 100%. And this whole thing of who I like doesn't like me and who likes me I don't like, that's due to split energy and a lack of clarity about what it is you want. 
And so you're just, you know, looking at people who are coming your way and you're just kind of sitting there like, all right, let's see what that's about. And you don't know what questions to ask because you don't know what it is that you want. You don't really have it purposeful. You're not like, okay, these are the 10 things that I need in my life, period. If these things are not there, love and light. You found a friend in me. No harm, no foul. But if you're allergic to my dog, we can't date. It's the simple, little, literally, like I'm not even kidding you. It's learning about your lifestyle, appreciating who you are, what matters to you, what's important to you, and then reverse engineering it. That is self-love. That is unconditional love of self. Now, there's more. There's way more to unconditional self-love. It's a constant work. A lot of it has to do with like the self-talk which we'll get into in a minute. Okay. So I say to her, okay, now I follow. A few things going on. First, do you believe that your ideal partner exists? If you have doubt, then the universe will only serve up ones who you like, who don't like you, and vice versa. So a lot of times people are out and about Hanging out, we're going out to meet people, la la la, awesome, awesome. And they're going out with split energy. And what I mean by that is basically you are out, you're looking good, you're feeling good, you're with your friends, but somewhere in the energy there's a, a loop and it's saying there aren't any good guys or girls out here. I'm never going to meet anybody. They're all shit show disasters. Um, I'm still not really over my ex yet, and so, you know, whatever happens with that happens, or, you know, I'm just so tired of, like, everybody just wanting the same bullshit over and over, and you're banging that drum of negativity, right? So you go out, and you're like, I want to meet somebody, but the negativity drum is more dominant, and you're going to meet the same type of people over and over again. So, again, on you to sort that out. So that's why I asked her, do you even believe... Blurry, hi, why blurry? Focus, no focus, focus. Oh my God, why is this not focusing? Hold on. Oh my God, I'm back, okay. So I asked her the question, like, do you believe that your ideal partner even exists? And so a lot of times, you know, people have to handle that. You have to be like out in the world with full belief, one, that you're worthy of meeting your ideal partner, and number two, that that person exists. Full on, full belief, full conviction, like it is imminent. This person is out there on their way to me. I need to prepare. Okay, continuing. Um, so I say to, to her, I love the affirmation. I'm only interested in those who are interested in me. Say that to yourself. I am only interested in those who are interested in me. I am only interested in those who are interested in me. You show me interest, honey, you, you got my I, undivided attention. I show you interest, we reciprocate, we co-create, we have this amazing conversation, we have growth, we have love, unbelievable, right? But if you're like, meh, I love myself too much. See, unconditional love gives you the power to say, to be with me, it's got to be a hell yeah, hell yeah. Hey, do you want to go get food? Hell yeah, Lise. Hell yeah. You want to have sex? Hell yeah, Lisa. You want to watch the ball game? Hell yes, Lisa. You want to breathe the same air as me for an hour? Hell yes, Lisa. Anything less than a hell yes gets a hell no for me. Sorry. I love myself. I can hang out alone. I'm not, you're not doing me a favor by like, you know, trying to pretend like you give a shit about me. Either you're all in or I'm all out. Put out. So carry that with you. It's a self-loving way to be. Um, you know, people should value the king and queen. You're a king. You're a queen. If it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no from you. So the other thing is what kind of guys are you attracting? How are they low vibe? You're telling somebody, oh, they're low vibe and I'm so high vibe. There's nothing high vibe about this message that I got. Nothing at all. And the people, you know, who come at me are looking for like that assessment, you know, and, and I'm doing it with love, but I want people to, to really be 
truthful with where they are and who they are so that they have then the power to transform. And it's like totally doable, totally doable. I mean, Jesus, if I could do it, anyone can do it. Okay. Um, who we attract tells us where we're at. I mentioned that before. It's powerful because if we don't like it, we can change it. We can't change other people. We can change ourselves. When you love yourself and you're like, okay, let's do some inventory. Like, where am I at with this topic? Like, how am I, you know, coming at these people? What am I doing? And you're very aware. That's self-loving. Am I nurturing myself? Am I dating the right people? Like, what is going on? And really having that minute to just give yourself that space to assess what is going on in your life. Who are you attracting? What are you evoking in them? Right? Because that's also a thing. And then what does that all mean? And, um, you know, it's just this constant work. It's this constant, like, evolvement that you're going through. And relationships really help you do that. And when you go and put yourself out there and you're dating again, got to do it from a self-loving place. Especially um, when you're coming over a breakup or ending something. Like, you need to allow that time to get into that strong self-loving place again because then you're vulnerable and you'll end up attracting like wacko people. So very, very important to be self-loving. So as far as heartbreak goes, that only happens, right? So here's the thing with heartbreak because she was like, and then I got broken hearted. So I said, as far as heartbreak goes, that only happens when we're attached to the outcome. The need to be valued by another is a total trap. Stick to the mantra, I only value those who value me. And we 100% can control who we fall in love with. Love yourself, love everyone, but be as you are, selective about who gets your heart and who gets your energy. You are a queen, head held high, elegant, confident, grace, and ease. So she writes me back. I'm so blessed that you've taken the time to reply to me. Super sweet, nice. And she says that she's um, very spiritual and she never fit in because everybody thought she was like crazy talking about law of attraction and all this stuff. And she says that she's an empath, a visualist and a messenger and that, you know, everybody's calling her a weirdo for like having this awareness and kind of shutting her down. And um, I gave up a lot around this guy um, that basically, and I gave up a lot around him with intention that he show up as is untainted by my judgments after I took responsibility that I was at the cause and he still hurt me. No, I don't, I don't think my ideal partner exists at times. That's why. When you don't believe that, number one, your ideal person that you conjured you have this person in your mind therefore they exist right it's just the law of physics and you know i don't know if you've ever like studied quantum physics at all but it's like fascinating and it just basically shows you the power of your thoughts and the energy of thought and how thoughts can become things and they are often in existence before they manifest physically in our lives um heavy maybe I need to like find a book if anybody can recommend one like quantum physics like basics so that I can like read it digest it and then like give it to the people because it's heavy like the stuff that I learned it like like made my head spin but like I got it and I studied it with this guy his name is Dr. Joe Dispenza he deals a lot with you know quantum uh and other people do it too it's, it's super high level and super crazy and whatever but there's books out there about it that said she um, felt that way, and she doesn't think that this guy exists. He does. And I'm fully aware that this is being answered by the universe because I'm powerful and awake and goddess and a queen. And so, she, yes, like a lot of people do this. They spit out affirmations, and they don't believe them, right? They, I am a queen, and you're like, no, you're not, because, yeah, I know you are, but I don't believe you believe you are. So she's saying this to her because she wants to believe it. Like she's saying it to herself. And I love that because, you know, subconsciously, like it'll catch on. Um, but then she says, like she's split. So she says, I'm very powerful and awake and a goddess and a queen whose ego plays with my heart sometimes and my head. And so you see how that is. It's she's, you know, 
out of alignment. She's one minute, I'm a goddess and I'm powerful and awake. And the fact that she can be vulnerable and aware enough to say like, dude, my ego gets the best of me sometimes. It plays with my heart. It's very real. And we go through this. I go through this too. I go through this too. My God, you piss me off. It's all ego, all ego. Um, you know, but then the awareness comes in after and you're like, wait a minute, I could have handled that better. Now I know better. I'll do better the next time. And you give yourself that self love and you talk yourself off the ledge and you say, you know, okay, how did I learn from this? What did I do right? What did I do wrong? What could be done better? And then you shake it off and you move on and that's it. So, you know, she says that she punishes herself. She self sabotages like that's not the behavior of a queen. Um, so I stuff things down when I can't, and I can't control the fear because I'm attached to the outcome of my life. I'm not strong emotionally. And, you know, she goes into a lot of other stuff and just, you know, how like she wants things to shift in her life, trying to surrender and allow regardless of what things look like. And the world is to fall apart so much so that it can all come back together perfectly. It's just like very high drama, heavy, like they're like, make light of this. Like this is like not as huge, like a deal. Like it seems like it is at the time. So you don't want to like minimize that because like when somebody's world is in an upheaval, like it's the big deal. But if you just take care of yourself, and you look at you and what you need first, most, best, always, before anyone. Yes, even the moms out there who might be watching, like, you come first. You come first. Period. Say it after me. Say, I am, and then put your name, and I come first. So it's going to go like this. I am Lisa, and I come first. So you do it. Say your name. Type it in the comments if you love it so much. I am Lisa and I come first. Boom. So the deal is unconditional love isn't about like bullshitting yourself and like it, it's like calling yourself out on your shit with the intention of elevating yourself to the you that you know really is you basically. It's, I am not in alignment with the good and the love of the core of who I know I am. And so then you take self-loving action to align yourself. So like we've all had days where you're like, what the hell? Like, why am I attracting this bullshit in my life? And what's going on? And then you start to talk shit to yourself. Not self-loving. So you say, instead, you kind of put the brakes on and you say, all right, what is going on here? What is going on here? Where is this coming from? What do I need? And you talk to yourself like you're a little kid. Um, there's a book that I mentioned once before. It's called Inner Bonding by uh, Margaret Paul, PhD. I did, um, I did study work with her. And um, she basically was um, one of the, if not the person method that cured me from codependency. Completely 100% lit the light up about the importance of self-love, the importance of making your well-being top priority in your life and nurturing yourself as if you were the parent to your hurt inner child. And then you have the opportunity to heal a bunch of stuff and give yourself the love and the nurturing and the care that you long for so that you're not like hanging that on somebody else outside of yourself. That's annoying and it makes people run away from you. Nobody likes stage five clinger. So like handle your shit and like do it from a self-loving place. Now, people who coach with me, train with me, um, we have this five step, six step method that I teach them that I did on myself and it works for anything. I do it from, I do it still. So it's, um, and if you want to check it out on your own, you can. It's the book, it's called Inner Bonding. It's by Margaret Paul, PhD, amazing. And, um, you know, it's, it really teaches you how to love yourself unconditionally. It is not easy. It is a daily practice. It's a daily commitment. But like, if you're not going to commit to yourself fully daily, 
Like, how can you possibly expect someone else to commit to you if you're not willing to commit fully to yourself? And when I say fully commit to your own self-love and your own unconditional love, I'm talking about investing in yourself. I'm, I don't care if it's listening to YouTube or, you know, download audio books, whatever, in your shower, as you're getting ready, in your car, like, what are you doing? What are you listening to? Like, to better yourself constantly. You can't be living life on cruise control. You always have to be elevating, thinking higher. Where am I going next? What am I doing? You got to be like, look, I love now. I love where I am. This is awesome. And I see a vision for myself. And as I'm moving towards that vision, I'm loving this. Like right now, chilling in my apartment, talking to you guys on a Facebook Live about a topic that is so, so important, especially now in the world we live in. It is such critical, critical importance that we all start to value ourselves and as parents start teaching little kids how to love themselves, how to really, truly ask for what they want, understand how important it is to feel worthy, to feel heard, to feel validated, and you teach that when they're little and they start to do it for themselves. And then you don't have crazy ass people shooting people in schools. You don't have people doing road rage and taking out mallets and hammers and crazy. You have like a civilized society where everyone is loving themselves. And so they're more tolerant of other people. And they're just like, look, I always say like, I have this, I have like this way of saying like, Namaste, which is like, you know, the, what is it? The, the, the love in me sees the love in you, the person in me, the, the soul in me sees the soul in you. And so I kind of get real with it because life isn't always like, you know, uh, it's, you know, people get real, people get pissed. So I am, you know, we're human. So I always say like the asshole in me sees the asshole in you because clearly if I see it, if I see somebody being an asshole, it's because like, there's a part of me that's an asshole. Like attracts like, like this is all we are. We're all bound, we're all connected. So when we talk about unconditional love of self, it's not meant in an egoic way. It's not meant in like, you know, that that's actually like a fake way. That's, that's actually the opposite. It's, you know, sometimes the people who are the most like showy and the most, um, you know, ah, uh, God, like, I don't know, like, nar it's not even narcissism. That's a whole other level of crazy. It's more like people who are, like, overcompensating for something that they feel they lack in themselves. And so, like, you know, they, it manifests itself in, in many different ways. You know, like, it could be a thing where they feel like, oh, I'm not worthy of love. And so they sabotage, like, every relationship that they're in. Or, you know, they they say like, oh, I'm so worthy, I'm so this, I'm so that, I'm so great. I, they brag about their job. They're, they're like amazing, oh, I'm so amazing. And they like overdo it. And it's because they're trying to prove something instead of just being like, dude, I'm just chill. Like, I don't, like, I'm cool with me. And like, not everybody will be. And that's totally fine. No problem. Like, all is good. I'm I, like, it's fine. You're not going to like everything I say and it's all good. I like what I say. I like me. It's all good. Right? So like living in that place of like that ease and that chill is like the sweet spot. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, if you're watching this video, I so encourage, um, unconditional self-love. And that means no matter what, you speak to yourself the way you would speak to a three-year-old. Imagine yourself little and scared and you want something and nobody's listening to you. And now you're an adult and you can say, what do you want? I'm here for you. Like anything you want, like just tell me what you want. And you know, this is something so simple and basic and I'll start you guys off with something so like so simple and basic that you could, um, and it's through the inner bonding work that I did that with a book, again, Inner Bonding by Margaret Paul. Um, and so when you're working, 
and you feel hungry and you don't stop what you're doing to get food and you push through, that is a form of neglect to yourself, to your inner child self, to like you little kid hurt inside, scared, um, thinking, you know, it's not going to eat or it's hungry or whatever. And so like those little things that you take so for granted when your body tells you, you know, it needs to eat and you're like, oh no, but I got this thing to do and oh, I got to pick this one up. And it is so important that you listen to your body and you love yourself to take a break, to step away from the computer, to make yourself something to eat, to run your errands in a way that allocates time for food, to just give yourself what you need. It's a little tiny thing, but it will set the path towards unconditional self-love. And when you have that, you're not going to tolerate bullshit. You're not going to attract bullshit anymore. You're just not going to have time for it. And it's, and it's amazing. I've seen it in my own life. Like everything's changed. Everything's changed. When I decided I am 100% fully responsible for all outcomes, I fess up to my bullshit. I have this saying, it says when I fuck up, I fess up and I fix it up. That's all I can do. Meaning I'll admit that I screw up. I'm a human. What I did wrong. I'm sorry. How can I fix it? How can I make it good? And that's it. When you learn better, you do better and you move on. And that's all this is. It's a journey. And to be unconditionally self-loving allows you the latitude to screw up and give yourself the space to be like, I get why I did that. I get why I said that. Totally understand that now. And it'll never happen again because you realized it on your own and you did it with love. You didn't beat yourself up over it. I mean, there's something to be said for the freedom of self-forgiveness. I mean, holy shit, like you're free. You're free. So I want to just give you another little last nugget of this before we leave the night of this Facebook Live. And I'm hopeful that you got some you know, good information out of this. And if something on here like resonated with you, and you want to um, shoot me an email and have a conversation with me and, you know, get some questions answered and stuff, even do a call with me. Um, I, you know, love the one-on-one -on -one phone calls. It's awesome. It gives me a chance to kind of explain how I work, how I can help you. It gives me a chance to learn about what you're going through and, you know, what's going on. And sometimes there are these little nuggets that then have an itch in my eye that are, um, you know, that other people can learn from. And this was the case today with this amazing exchange that I had with this gem of a girl, queen of a girl who, you know, she's just a little split. She's like, she knows her value, but then she, she doubts herself. So that self-doubt is, is a tough thing, but it is manageable. It's, you know, you commit to it. You can handle anything. You can be, do, have whatever you put your mind to. Um, okay, so the last thing it's... She's saying that, you know, she, she'd love to communicate with me and whatever. So she came at me with this, like, a lot of stuff that she was going through. And so what I want to share is, like, the response that I gave her. And this will just, like, give you guys a sense of, like, you know, what, what was up with her. There are a lot of similarities because I hear this same stuff across the board. And so what I said was I gave almost, like, a prayer to her after everything she shared with me. And I did it in a way that it was coming from source, like God, whatever you want to call it. And so I say, divine source, please make yourself known through my sister and friend, and I name her. Help her to truly love herself and remain in alignment and connected with you, divine source, at all times. Please show her that she is valued by you, divine source. And because of this, she needs zero approval from anyone. You roll with source, 
You need no self. You need nothing. Nothing. Nothing that anyone can give you ever can surpass that. You're like a level of badass because you're like, like me or not, I roll with source. So, all good. You're like a mere mortal. Like, I have the, you know, approval of infinite intelligence. So, fuck with me. But anyway, <laughs> so, no, it's like, a, seriously, it's a different thing. Okay, so on with my prayer. So I say, you know, please guide her and lead her to new opportunities and people who reflect her true self. Remove all insecurities and any need to self-sabotage for a self-loving person knows that how we treat ourselves in the present determines our future. Please show her that she isn't alone. She must value herself more than anyone ever could, should, and will. Help her to be at peace with her relationship with you, Divine Source, so that she always knows that she's completely supported and loved by you just by simply existing. Like, how badass is that? Like, I'm loved because I exist. Holla! Um, when she understands that she is divine and that you, Source, resides within her, she will be free of any attachment to the outcomes of her life. This is my request for my sister. She will free up her grip and will not feel this emotional upheaval any longer. Please help her see that anything physical that is happening to her in her body is nothing more but a physical manifestation of her old beliefs that do not serve her anymore. And she says she's a queen and a goddess, but she doubts herself and remains disconnected from you, Divine Source, which is her true source of power, and love her for herself first and then in the world. And with this I trust that the power of the Divine Source and the collective universe, the Ascended Masters, angels, and the collective will show her that she is never alone, always loved, always guided. And so it is, and so it shall be. And I then said, get that book, girl. I'm here for you. Start something on your own. At least, you know, have something uplifting and empowering that you can do on your own. I'm telling you guys, like, the one thing that I always say to people, there is so much information out there. The people, like, if you're catching this video on YouTube, this is not an accident. Like, I was where you were. I was surfing the internet on YouTube, crying in my bed, 3 o'clock in the morning, waking up in a panic, not able to fall back to sleep, looking at my phone, like, for answers. And I found books, and I found YouTube videos, and coaches, and mentors, and healers. And just, when you put the request out, the help is on its way. So if you found this video, I am happy to help you. I mean, dude, hit me up. Like, we'll have a good time. Like, I'm not all about making this like a chore. Like, this is you, your life, you discovering yourself. Like, love up on yourself enough to do this work. It's beautiful work. And in doing it, who you attract in your life, what you attract in your life, the inspiration, your thoughts, like, my God, everything just opens up for you. So this is my wish to you. I am here for you. Hit me up, even just to say, hey, like, holla. Um, I love that. It's awesome. I get viewer mail now. It's so fun. I, like, chit-chat with people left and right. It's great. And it inspires these topics. So please don't be shy. Trust me when I tell you I protect my sources. Never do I share a name. I only share circumstances, things that I believe other people can learn from. I learn from it, too. And, um, yeah, we have a good time. We, like, coach. We get together. I tell you some fun shit. I uplift you. I remind you that you are a queen, that you are a king, and that your behavior and your actions have got to be in alignment with that. And when it is, honey, what you start to attract is just pure magic. So with that, I wish you a wonderful evening. You can reach me, lisaconcepcion.com, or email me, lisa at lisaconcepcion.com, or you can... Um, also message me via my Facebook like page, which is Love Quest with Lisa Concepcion. Thanks so much, you guys. Have a great night. Blessings and abundance always. Good night.